something. If you open up the app now on Muharram, can we read the, the du'a for welcoming of Muharram and Mawlana Shaykh's teaching that anyone who recites it, it said and this is, these are the teachings of awliya, it said that whoever reads this three times Allah will appoint two angels to accompany that believer protecting him from the fitna of shaitan in the coming year. Shaitan will give up and try inshaAllah the next year. <laughs> so inshaAllah with the barakah of awliyaullah and the inspirations and the blessings that Sayyidina Muhammad sent to them by means of that Allah to protect us and, and to guide us and every blessing begin to come to us, inshaAllah. Recite this one three times and then tomorrow we'll do it again but for the importance of, of just hearing these words inshaAllah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Allahumma anta al-abadiyu qadeemu al-awwal wa ala fadlika al-azeem wa kareem wa judika al-ameem al-mu'abbal wa hadha aamun jadeedun qad akbal bas as'aluka al-ismata fihi min al-shaytani wa awliyaihi wa junoodihi wa al-awn على هذه النفس اللمارة بالسوء والاشتعال بما يقربني إليك الظلف يا ذو الجلال والإكرام وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم أنت الأبدي القديم الأول وعلى فضلك العظيم والكريم وجودك العميم المعبل وهذا عام جديد قد أقبل أسألك العصمة فيه من الشيطان وأوليائه وجنوده والعون على هذه النفس الأمارة بالسوء والاشتغال بما يقربني إليك زلف يا ذو الجلال والإكرام وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم أنت الأبدي القديم الأول وعلى فضلك العظيم وكريم جودك العميم المعقل وهذا عام جديد قد أقبل أسألك الإسمة فيه من الشيطان وأوليائه وجنوده والعون على هذه النفس الإمارة البسو والاشتغال بما يقربني إليك ذو الفيا ذو الجلال والإكرام وصلى الله تعالى سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى محمد المصطفى وبسيرة سورة الفاتحة الشفاتي رسول الكريم بمددكم من نظركم إن شاء الله everything is on the app and everybody can get the app follow the app and you can copy and paste from the app and make a post on Facebook or blogs or social media and put a hyperlink saying download this app. So alhamdulillah this is the, the ways to spread the teachings and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and teaching of awliyaullah and the Nashbandi traditions and the path of awliyaullah and everything that we do in their way gains the nazar of these pious souls. Our life is about catching the the vision because Allah directed us in Qur'an that, don't say to Prophet that, listen to me because the piety and the reality of the purity of Sayyidina Muhammad is samina watana that these ears are for Allah and the ears of Sayyidina Muhammad is to submit to Allah 
and there is no human to change the course of that reality. And that's why Allah clarified this station of Sayyidina Muhammad when we say, Ummihi, it's not that he's unlettered he's the custodian of all uloom and knowledges, knowledges of awwaleen wa akhireen and that his holy soul is, is the fountain of all realities. But as a way in which Allah wanted to lay a claim that no human has taught this benevolent soul and no human can come and say, no I taught him poetry when he was young, I taught him alphabet when he was at this age. So that they would stake a case or a claim to have composed the Qur'an because Allah is best of planners and knows how bad humans are that they would have tried to make a claim that, no, no these teachers taught and that's how Qur'an came. So Allah cleared the field and said, no there's no teacher for this soul but someone who is shadeed al-qawwa whom is immensely powerful, Allah referring to himself that Allah is the teacher for Sayyidina Muhammad that no human on this earth was in need to teach this benevolent and pious and immense soul and reality of Prophet As a result of that Allah is saying, He's not here to listen to anyone, He listens only to Allah and then became asked that His nazar be upon you. That the immensity of the lights that follow from and flow from these divine eyes of Sayyidina Muhammad those eyes shine upon us and take every difficulty away. Our life is <coughs> to catch that nazar, our life is continuously that what we can do on a daily basis so that his ridha and satisfaction, his happiness and his joy be upon us, upon our families and our communities and as a result that in the gaze of Prophet to come to us and to fill us with every light and every immense blessing and fill our eternal souls where there is no limit on the capacity of what it can be filled and by virtue of those lights every, <coughs> every difficulty and sickness to be taken away. <coughs> Awliyaullah and the, those who have been trained by them, they told that live a life because someone wants to know if they're mukhlas, are they are just a Muslim and they accepted religion, they accepted no the matter what you think you are Jewish, Christian, Muslim, this, these are all titles but are you one whom submits your will? to the will of the Almighty, then you become a Muslim, one whom is submitting their will to the will of the Divine. Whatever book you're reading that's between you and your Lord. Then you become the next maqam to be a mu'min in which you believe and Allah begin to teach, don't say that you believe, just say you accept it. Because belief is a light that has to enter into our hearts. Belief is that you you have a love for Sayyidina Muhammad more than you love for yourself. Then you know that now you are entering into the maqam of a mu'min, that you put before yourself and before everything you put that love for Prophet that is a, a love in everything. Before you choose how fashionable you want to look and how beautiful you beautify yourself, is it considered fashionable and beautiful?
beautiful for Prophet Are you adorning yourself for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad? Are you adorning yourself for shaitan? Will shaitan look and say, good, your mind, our life is always for the nazar, the Prophet to be happy with our appearance, to be Prophet to be happy with what we're trying to do with ourselves, the Prophet Allah be happy with the character and the akhlaq that when one struggles with themselves and their bad desires and bad character and that they're trying to be an ambassador for the reality, this is taking the nazar, the gaze of Prophet is looking to that one and that's what their life is about, that's why they're guiding, that's why they're inspiring to people. That don't, don't let shaitan to be happy with you. He doesn't give you credits in paradise and as a result of shaitan being happy with you that you've disformed yourself, disfigured yourself, made yourself to be inappropriate in looking and that turns away Allah, the gaze of the Divine and Sayyidina Muhammad So everything in our life is to calibrate that, is this going to make Prophet happy with us? When we get past that lower level, that's the entry level that a mu'min and a Muslim is thinking that, I don't want to look like something that shaitan is happy with but I want something that Allah will be happy with. And Allah directed us then make sure that you're following the way and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Then the, the nazar for my soul that in my actions, my prayers, my character, my zakah, everything that I'm doing is that doing the way that Prophet wanted for me to be doing. So our life is continuously under the, the vision and the Divinely gaze, the, the one whom benevolent and the word that they use that, that continuously bestowing all grace and majesty upon our souls. That every goodness that we do, we're saying uh, people watching say, oh it's, it's Allah who sends it and, yeah Allah, Allah sends everything but that because you have no mind you say that. Allah wants us to understand there's a means as in this dunya this sunshine shining to you but it's Allah that made it. And the Divine sunshine is the light of Sayyidina Muhammad that when you do good Allah push into the heart that, look at them, look at them that they're there for you, that don't pass them by with your vision, they sit. They sit day and night trying to please you, that happen that famous people came or important people came and Ahlul Sufa and the pious who were sitting, they would sit always for a moment in a gaze from Prophet And because the important people came and Prophet went out and gave them attention and Allah revealed that verse. Just for us as a reminder that don't let your eyes pass them. Those whom they love you and they have ishri. That was an isharat for us. The never Prophet would choose important people but for us to understand how dear it is for Allah that those who sit with the ish and love and trying their best and everyone to their own level of struggle. Struggling in that way, how dear it is for Allah to tell Prophet that, keep your gaze upon them. Imagine in the world of light where the gaze is in all direction as a light, there's no physical direction. 
The light of Prophet is in all om, omniscient, omnipresent and in every direction that light is shining. And how Allah love and immense mercy is directing into that heart that then let your gaze pass them because of the mercy that, that flows with that light. That everything that is dying is rejuvenated with that light, everything falling short is filled to capacity with that light. Every, every type of sickness is healed with that light. Whatever we can imagine is flowing through that light. So our life is about continuously being under that Divinely gaze. What can we do that Prophet to be happy with us, with our form, with our soul, with our money, with our property, with our family, with everything that we have we've put in front and ask the Prophet to be happy with us, to dress us, to bless us and to sweeten our tongue with the remembrance of the Divine and the praising and the salawat and durood the sharif that do it often, as often as you can to make yourself to be sweet. The shaykhs are responsible for your rushd. When Sayyidina Musa asked to meet with Sayyidina Khidr to be a rushd that maybe something of a, a ripening and a sweetening that can come my way and was a sign that I'm in need of this Muhammadan reality and was sent to Sayyidina Khidr who's the Muhammadan representative as a reminder for us that to sweeten our life sweeten our connection and to keep our lives to be sweet with the salawat and the dhikr of Allah May Allah protect us always from the badness and keep life under this Divinely nazar, under the gaze and under the rida and satisfaction of Sayyidina Muhammad and inspire us all within ourselves to do better, to do good, to Keep Prophet happy with us with good deeds and good actions. It answers everyone's questions, what should I do, how much should I do, all this, all that. Everyone then knows within their heart that whatever they do and whatever they're struggling with is to keep that nazar and the gaze and that love of Prophet to be upon ourselves. And the heart that, that feels, feels that sincerity, that don't, don't pass, my, pass me up with your Divinely vision, that keep your Divinely vision upon us. And that's why the shaykh inspires all the people to, to board this train of Divine love. And every action that they're doing, every book they put out, every video they put out, every post they put out, every social media link they're putting out is to get the satisfaction of Prophet That he be happy his rida and satisfaction to be dressing and then dress all those whom helped in it, all those who supported it, all those who liked it, all those who accompanied it and it becomes a train of Divinely blessings and benedictions. Every grace and majesty dresses it because they understood the way, they understood their life is to keep that Divinely vision upon the souls and it moves with that Divinely grace and that Divinely blessings. We pray that Allah continue that blessings upon ourselves, our families, our communities. And that Divinely nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad to dress us with all of its knowledges and all of its realities. The farewell of this year that we survived and some people have lost loved ones, may Allah raise them and dress them. And those whom survived and were able to keep healthy, alhamdulillah, we pray that Allah protect us in the coming year of Muharram. Mm -hmm. And that Muharram has an immense light of blessing.
that when we step tomorrow and step with the farewell and at Maghrib time welcoming the tajalli of Muharram, stepping on a path and a pilgrimage to Allah Visualize ourselves in that pilgrimage that we are stepping another year with our right foot because every goodness and grace and blessing we step with our right foot. We showered and washed in welcoming that month like the shower of one whom all sins have died from them and they're reborn and reborn as pure and new. And stepping and asking Allah that make my life to be of no haram, my life to be good and clean and wholesome and that I'm moving towards Your Divinely Presence and every reality to dress us and bless us. It's the month of the hijrah, the month in which Prophet moved into the oceans of reality, left the reality of Mecca to enter into the cities of Divinely Light and moving into the cave of all realities which has so many immense secrets and that Imam Ali Salam lied in the bed to sacrifice himself. All of these knowledges, all of the realities of the ninth surah, Surah Tawbah, all of the realities of sacrifice and this way of sacrifice begin to open. And then the 10 days of Muharram for Ashura. And Ashanura is in which Allah in these 10 days grants immense salvation and every nation of His Divinely love was granted salvation on Ashura. We lost the connection. No, we can hear Sayyidi, it's good, it's good. Are we, get, are we down? No, we can hear you, everything good. You're good? It's right now. Ashura. So, so many beautific things are opening and dressing. This is a, a month in which Allah grants salvation. That every opening of light, every blessings of light and the Muhammadan nation that are at the forefront of all creation. They lead by the example of self-sacrifice and that their masters are the masters of sacrifice and they laid the foundation for sacrifice, they laid the foundation for struggling in the way of Allah and as a result of their immense struggles we benefit from all of its light and its blessings by keeping their love and their way and that becomes the love of Imam Al Husayn salam. And shuhadai Karbala salam. May Allah dress us, bless us and let us to see its day and nights and to fast its day and nights and to be blessed by its immense lights and blessings. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basiri Surat al-Fatiha.